Now I realize that some of you, it's 2020. These are different times, difficult times. And so some of you may be actually canceling some travel plans that you might have been planning to do. And um, so I thought about even not talking about yoga while traveling today, but I decided, you know, you can also make this a little bit broader and think about um, yoga with um, upcoming holiday seasons, anything honestly that kind of throws off your schedule that takes you out of kind of that regular routine. And I know that some people are planning some smaller travel, maybe with some getting a COVID test and quarantining and seeing some immediate family, those types of smaller things. So I do think some of you do have some travels that are coming up, um, or you might have some people coming to see you in one of those kind of smaller settings. So, I do think it's valuable to really think ahead about how you could continue your consistent yoga practice when you travel. And even if you're not traveling this year, someday you will again, right? Fingers crossed, someday we'll be back to normal and we'll be traveling again. Um, but any travel, whether you're going somewhere or someone's coming to see you, it can really, again, impact that routine. So I have some strategies, some tips, some things for you. Um, and if you are headed somewhere, don't forget to pack your mat. It's hard to do yoga if you don't have your mat. You don't have to have a mat, but it is also a nice reminder right? That's like, oh, I brought this thing, I should use it. <laughs> um, and sometimes um, you will want a travel mat, depending on what type of mat you use for your everyday practice might impact what you want to take. So for example, my regular mat that I use at the studio is very heavy. It's over eight pounds when it's all wrapped up and put together. So I don't travel with that. It's too clunky, it's too big, it's too heavy. So I have a specific travel mat. It's much thinner. I wouldn't want to use it regularly because it's so thin, but it works really nice. I can roll it up, I can even put it um, in my backpack uh, where the side pocket where a water bottle is meant to go, I can put my mat all the way down in there so that even if I'm flying, it can be a carry-on uh, item right there with my backpack. So it only weighs two, three pounds compared to my almost nine pound monster. So something that's easy can wrap right up and not take up a ton of space. They do also have, um, travel mats that fold up and they become a little square so that you can pack them in like a suitcase pretty easily. And I have several friends that use those um, and, and really like those. I Mine is still one that rolls up, but like I said, it fits right in my backpack. So you might wanna think ahead a little bit about that, that if you don't wanna take your regular mat, what might you take? Second, you really need to just commit. Right, so packing a mat is kind of that first step to try to remind you, I was going to do this, I said I was going to practice yoga, and then you really need to commit that you don't want that yoga mat to be like some of those outfits that you pack that you never wear, <laughs> right? You're like, why did I pack all these things? I didn't end up wearing half of it. You also don't want that to be, why did I bring this yoga mat and I didn't even use it? right? So pack it and really commit to using it. So make a plan as part of that commitment. I'm packing it. I'm going to do it and start to think about when, right? And you can talk to your family, whoever you're planning to visit and say, hey, I really want, I'm planning to bring my mat, right? And, um, depending on when you travel, it's 2020 right now, so there may not be studios having classes, but sometimes there are, and you might want to look up, 
are there any studios having class right now in 2020? What kind of COVID measures are they taking? Or am I comfortable with that? Or right now, I'm not going to do that. I don't feel safe doing that. Or there's no classes being held at studios where I'm going, or there isn't a studio. Maybe you want to pre-make a YouTube playlist that these are the yoga flows I wanna do over this trip and you make a, a playlist. Or if you um, are a member in a online yoga membership, maybe you plan out, oh, I really wanna do this one and I wanna do this one and have that plan so that you have your mat, you've committed and you have a plan of what you're going to do. It makes it so much easier to execute your plan when you have it. And you can also recruit, right? So if you are visiting family, you can recruit and say, hey, who wants to do some yoga with me this weekend or while I'm there? I'm going to bring my mat and I have this membership I'm a part of. I can pull up, you know, this or that and we can enjoy and do some yoga together, right? Um, and because a lot of times, especially if you're traveling during holidays, there's some downtime, right? And so making that plan for, hey, a couple afternoons, let's do this. Or when we get up on Thanksgiving morning before we start cooking, and before we do all this stuff, let's do a little yoga, right? Make that plan, recruit others. <laughs> um, and then find your spot when you get there. So if you're going to stay in a hotel, maybe you're not traveling for holidays, but you're traveling for work, figure out where your mat can go. And remember that it doesn't you don't need a huge space for yoga. Your yoga mat's nice and narrow, it's long. I sometimes will put it at the end of the bed. Um, sometimes if it's a, a, a room that has like the two queens, you can usually fit your mat in between the beds or under like the window is usually a nice spot too. Or I've even done it in the hall, like in front of the door right? Sometimes there's that longer hallway. Because when you're just taking the class, you don't need a lot of space around you, right? You just need your device that's maybe going to show you the flow and then uh, room for your mat. But if that feels claustrophobic or it's disruptive in the room because you have family and they're watching television or whatever, I have always found that hotels are really uh, amenable and flexible with finding you a space. I have taught uh, virtual yoga classes from a hotel and I just went to reception and said, hey, I'm supposed to teach a yoga class here pretty soon. Is there a space that I could use? And um, it was no problem. And they found me um, a little place that I could go and use. If you're staying with family, that hopefully will be a little easier Hopefully there's a place that you can um, go and tuck your yoga mat in or you feel like you have some space from other people or maybe that you've recruited enough people to join you that it's not a problem. And same thing, if you have family that's coming to you, so you're not traveling, but people are traveling to you, you can set the same kind of things. Ask as you're making your plan, figure out when you want to do yoga. And you can still recruit and say, hey, pack your mat when you're coming my way. I would like to do some yoga. It'd be super fun if we did it together. I have this playlist or I have this membership and we can do these. And it's fine if you don't have any experience. These are beginner friendly, right? You can talk it up and you can get them on board to do uh, some yoga with you. Maybe you have an extra mat that they can borrow because you have your mat and your travel mat that they can use, right? And you can figure out kind of the logistics. And I find that sometimes the, the difficult part when people come to visit us is we feel a little guilty carving out that time to go and do yoga or to you know be away and not being a good hostess or host. And I really think you wanna get away from that mindset that just because someone's visiting you, right, doesn't mean you have to be on and with them 100% of the time. They may want a little break of their own. 
you will feel better when you're done. Hopefully they might do some yoga with you even, and that could be extra fun. But even if they don't, even if you get no interest, no takers, don't feel guilty taking an hour or 45 minutes or half an hour, whatever it is, to meet yourself on the mat. Make that time because you know you'll feel better for having done it. And then you bring a better version of yourself for the rest of the day. So pack your mat, make a plan, commit to that plan, tell your family the plan so that they help hold you accountable, right? Say, aren't you going to do yoga this morning? Did you do that already? <laughs> right? Try to get some others to do it with you and just find any spot. It doesn't have to be perfect. Once you get going, you'll feel better when you're done just for having done it. And of course, if it's useful for you um, and helpful, if you're like, I don't know what I would even do. I don't have um, anybody that I do yoga with or that I um, use regularly. YouTube is always real hit or miss. And um, you want to be able to kind of trust the flows that you're doing. I am on YouTube, Yoga with TG. I have some short flows on there. And if you want full flows that you can access all the time, whenever you want to, I do have an online membership. Would love to have you join in. It's less than a dollar a day, and you can yoga all the time, right? So bit.ly slash TG membership will take you um, to more information about that. And maybe now is a great time, right, to commit to your practice, especially this, it's becoming winter and it's holiday season and a little bit stressful. So more yoga, the better. So I hope you have a great week and I hope you meet yourself on your mat and I hope that you have um, a great rest of the week.